Good morning, everybody. Thank you for bearing with us as we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but it should turn out to be some pr pretty cool tech that you get to see today, so hopefully the wait will be worth it. Um, I'm sure it will be. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Anna Nikonarova with Intuitive Data Visualization in Augmented Reality. Good morning, guys. Sorry, it took a little bit of setup. I'm hoping to do the live demo, and as some of you might know, it doesn't go perfectly well. But let's see. Hopefully, we can do some real um, augmented reality today. Uh, so the talk that I'm going to try and present today is about alternative data visualization. Um, let me start with us as human beings. We as human beings have um, we're pretty awesome. Uh, we are very dexterous with our hands. We have um, really fantastic mental capabilities. But we do have um, some challenges for the physical and mental environment. For example, our eyes. Um, our eyes cannot see that far or very close. So what do we do as humans? We invent technology in order to compensate for the things that we lack. So we invented telescopes to see very far, or we, saw, we invented microscopes to see very close. The same as we can't walk very far, we can't walk very close, so we've created trains, planes, and other means of transportation to kind of compensate for our physical limitations. And today I want to discuss our, one of our physical limitations that we didn't really overcome. I think we as humans are enumerate. Uh, the term innumeracy was coined in 1988 by mathematician John Allen Paulson, and he proposed that um, the way we interpret numbers is not completely correct. We are lacking the ability to contextualize numbers in the physical world. Um, let me elaborate what I mean by numeracy. I don't necessarily mean that a person is, cannot subtract or add, cannot multiply, uh, but that a person has a hard time conceptualizing uh, very large numbers. So after we pass a certain threshold, numbers like 10, 20, 50, when we get into 170 billion or 170 million, we have a hard time making a distinction of what the number actually means. Another issue with enumeracy is when we talk about numbers, um, we all interpret the numbers based from our personal experience and our uh, previous um, uh, frame of reference. So when I'm talking, for example, about a meal and I'm saying that the meal has 60% fat, you're going to interpret this information based from your point of reference of what you think about the meal um, and about fat. But maybe I mean a completely different thing. So that means that we're talking about the same, I guess, absolute numeric uh, volume, but we understand it from different perspective. Another issue is enumeracy, and uh, it comes through the tools that we use currently from data visualization perspective. We, cons we spend so much mental energy in comprehending the number that we don't really can spend more energy, I guess, to contextualize it. So when I'm telling you, for example, that 15% of adult US population um, does not have high school diploma, you're comparing 15% to 100%, and you're like, well, I guess it's not that much. But when we're trying to put it into perspective that it's 37 million people, um, it gives a completely different frame of reference. Um, so the point that I'm trying to make is that um, our current vis data visualization tools do not compensate for our um, um, disadvantages, I guess, of interpreting uh, large numbers, contextualizing things, and um, using the same frame of reference. And it becomes an issue because as it's things stand today in 2018, we became factories basically for producing numbers. We've surrounded ourselves with devices, so every time we move, every time we touch something, we produce an incredible volume of information, and now we have to build um, a lot of data storage facilities in order to store all this data. And as the way things are going, and I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar, we will have to build more data pipes, but it becomes challenging because we don't really know how to interpret the numbers that are flowing through. So what I'm proposing today is that augmented reality can be potentially a really good tool to compensate our disability um, 
to, to deal with uh, numeric measurements of quantities. I'm going to try and position augmented reality as a productivity tool. Um, so it's um, the reason why I'm proposing um, this as a data visualization tool is because it can function within our environment without um, us trying to switch to another device and verify information, let's say, on our computer or on our phone. It allows for collaboration, so uh, many people can look at an object from different perspectives without um, um, uh, s switching context. And then another thing is it allows us to function in three dimensions and draw things that are right now, let's say, hard to execute in 2D environment, whether it's in a browser or on our laptops. Um, for this conference, I prepared two demos, um, and I'm hoping to do it live. I brought a HoloLens, um, and um, I'm hoping to show you how, what can be an alternative for data visualization. So as I've mentioned, humans have a hard time interpreting really large numbers, a number like 112 billion. So in search for really large numbers, um, I went to Fortune 400 and um, I found the top four highest earning individuals. And the numbers there are in billions. Uh, you have to make at least a billion to make it to Fortune's list. And um, when we get a data set like this, our first intentions um, for people who are working with data is to create a data visualization. So we draw a bar chart. Whether we draw it in 2D or 3D doesn't really matter. Um, a visualization like this usually just shows us a relative volume of one bar versus another. So by looking something like this, you're like, okay, I get it. Jeff Bezos earns more than Bernard Arnault. But it doesn't provide you really the context of what this $112 billion actually mean. Uh, what do, does it represent? So in order to kind of abstract from traditional uh, bar chart data visualization, um, I wanted to bring it to a scale that is familiar to um, a lot of people. Um, and I was thinking, okay, what can I take uh, that is extremely costly? Uh, and I found this statistics that to rebuild Manhattan, just the buildings, will cost you about $630 billion. I'm like, that's awesome. Okay, let's take this as a measurement. Because even if you haven't been to New York City, you can conceptualize that it's a big city with a lot of infrastructure and it's expensive. So um, what now we can do is knowing the cost of how much it actually costs us as humans to build a Manhattan, we can translate the wealth of individuals on fortunes list into the uh, amount of neighborhoods that you can actually buy for uh, the amount of wealth that you have. So averaging one neighborhood in Manhattan to about 20 blocks, uh, we can now translate um, uh, what Jeff Bezos can actually afford in terms of the neighborhoods. Uh, so he can afford four neighborhoods. Um, and now we can use this new recreated slightly enhanced mathematical data set in order to um, create a data visualization. So let me show you how it's going to look like. Fingers crossed that it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Give me one second. Okay. So the demo is going to be a little bit slightly delayed um, because of the connectivity. Sorry, one second. Okay, so I hope you can see um, what I'm seeing, so I'm going to try and live stream this. This is the traditional bar chart that we've been talking about, so it's just sitting there. 
But my point is that now we can enable people to actually use their gestures and gaze in order to get additional information. So if we're going to render charts, now we can get actually four blocks in Manhattan and start exploring what it actually means from the um, perspective additional of contextualized information. So if we're working, let's say, on I don't know, we're editors at Fortune, we can um, start looking at something like this in order to help us explore and understand what, it, what the absolute wealth of the individual actually means. Um, so this was the first demo um, where I tried to bring back some things that we already know. Uh, the second demo is actually dealing not with very big numbers. It's actually dealing with smaller numbers, numbers like 8,848. This number is um, absolute height of Mount Everest. I really love climbing mountains, and every time I go and climb something, I come back and my friends are asking me, okay, so how high was it? And I usually tell, okay, well, it was something 21,000 something. And they're like, wow, that's high. But I don't think that they really get a feeling of what um, an absolute height of the mountain actually is. Um, this is a data visualization of seven summits, so seven highest mountains in the world. But again, beautiful visualization, very pretty, but it doesn't really tell you anything about in terms of how long is it going to take you to climb one. Is it hard? Is it challenging? Is it physically intensive? So in order to translate um, uh, climbing a mountain into something comprehensible to any person who in this room or in this city, let's say. Um, I tried to do some additional mathematic, mathematical tweaking. So I took the altitude of the mountain and translated it uh, from the base camp. Because when we climb the mountain, we don't really take the absolute height from the sea level. We start climbing from, uh, from the base camp. And then I translated it into flights of stairs. My initial idea was to take the stairs and just put them next to the mountain. Unfortunately, the stairs are really small, uh, so I translated it into high buildings. Like Empire State Building has 86 flights of stairs, so you can actually place Empire State Buildings next to the mountain. So with that, let me show you how it's actually going to look like in mixed reality. OK. So. So I hope you can see what I'm seeing right now. So these are seven mountains, uh, seven highest summits um, on every continent. And as a person who is exploring the mountain can actually click and see the actual rendering of the mountain and the number of Empire State buildings that it's going to take to climb one. So let's say if somebody is asking you, okay, so how hard is to climb Denali? person can pull something like this, explore the landscape, and see, okay, you know what, if I'm going to run up Empire State Building about 14 times, that will give me a good feeling of what the mountain actually feels like. So this was the two demos that I brought with me, but the reason why I'm standing in this conference is not to show you only how cool augmented reality actually is, but to show how doable it is and how accessible it is. Anybody who knows Python can create about 50% of a demo like this. Um, let me walk over the tech stack. As I've mentioned, 50% can be fully done in Python. It all starts with the data. Um, so just your regular CSV file or a JSON, uh, together with um, some of the data munging tools, something like, let's say, like Pandas. Um, and then um, 3D asset creation software like Blender will do, and you can fully create already an experience like this. Unfortunately, the other 50% of actually assembling the experience and deploying it is not fully Pythonized, but again, this is just the beginning of 2018, so um, I'm pretty sure um, we can make some strides in the next couple of months. The way it looks like is Blender is an open source software, and it has Python SDK. If you, it's, um, um, if you will enter the software, you can pull up the console, which looks like pretty much anything that you are used to. Uh, and you can very easily ingest a data set and convert it into your dictionary. Um, which, what happens next is that now we can iterate on every row of dictionary, and for every row, we can create something standard, like let's say a bar chart, simply by just drawing boxes based on the absolute volume of your data set. 
But now things get interesting. Now, instead of just drawing boxes and pie charts and pie charts, you can bring um, any object that you can imagine or build or somebody else has built. So in my case, these are neighborhoods in Manhattan. But full disclosure, I didn't create it. Other people online have created it. Basically, you don't need to be a designer uh, or an artist in order to create in 3D. You can find anybody, anybody else's work done in FBX or dot OFG uh, format and just import it and use it in your data visualization, just basically like for using images um, in your code. And I want to point out that Blender also allows you to create text, text as an object. So throwing all of this together allows us to create a much more complex experience than your regular, I guess, bar, bar chart, um, allowing you to bring a little bit more context into data, allowing you to bring human beings, buildings, other things that we're dealing in the physical world and that provide more context of what you're trying to explain to another person with your data visualization. Unfortunately, this is where the Python part ends uh, because we need to enter the world of Unity. Unity is the software for game development, one of the most dominant, I would say. Um, but I want to point out how easy it is to transfer your 3D assets from Blender to Unity. Literally drag and drop and the whole experience is already available to Unity to add additional animation. In Unity, there is a little bit of fine tuning required. It it's done in C Sharp. We need to enable the gaze gesture manager management or any other interactions that you want the user to perform in order to interact with the data visualization. And then hide and show some of the objects that are located within um, your, I guess, data environment. Um, this is the final step deployment, so I'm choosing to use HoloLens for the demo, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, there are plenty of AR experiences coming right now to our phones. There are many more devices coming. And the point that I want to make is once it's created into Un in Unity, it can be scaled to other things. Um, in fact, a lot of people um, at Vuforia, Easy AR, are trying to work on, um, uh, on a platform that allows you to scale your experience. So basically, we don't really need to relieve App Store in 2009, but make some things that are scalable across different devices and is interactable across different devices. There is still a lot of work needs to be done in AR. The demos that I showed you, they're relatively simple. I'm taking a very simple data set where I'm dealing only with one dimension. Um, but I think it's going to be really, really cool if um, um, we can bring additional many dimensions. Let's say you're working with a data set like census of the US population, and you can bring in uh, lots of variables at the same time and actually draw them in three dimensions. Um, but I'm trying, the point that I'm trying to make is that it's potentially a step in a direction where we deal with data set in a more intuitive, set, intuitive way instead of just looking at things, whether they're bigger or smaller than something else. Thank you very much. Um, and this is all what I have for today. Um, I, maybe we have a couple of minutes and I'm happy to take questions if you have any. Well, still, thank you so much for coming and have a good time at PyCon. <laughs>